Warning, the following video may contain graphical settings that some gamers may find upsetting. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've long been a fan of channels like the Low Spec Gamer, who takes modern games and makes them run on older or weaker hardware. Even though I've used quite a few GPUs in my time, I've never really experimented with graphics mods or configuration file tweaks. Today I just had to give this a go for myself and see if I can improve the performance of my GT520 graphics card here. A GPU that suffers miserably in modern games, especially considering it's the 1GB DDR3 version which makes it weaker than a lot of Intel HD graphics. So, in this video inspired by Low Spec Gamer as well as my recent love for GameSpot's Potato Mode videos, let's see if we can help this GT520 out a little bit. First of all, I'll be discussing the tweaks I'll be using for each game, showing you the graphical changes they make, and then testing out the GT520 before and after said tweaks. So starting off with Skyrim, the oldest game tested today, and this is what it looks like running at the lowest settings before mods, with 800x600 resolution. You can see that everything looks pretty muddy, with jagged edges pretty much on everything, but still, this is how I used to run it on my old Toshiba laptop I once had, so it's no big deal. The DDR3520 being as weak as it is, will likely need some serious graphical game downgrades in order to run smoothly, so I've downloaded the Nexus Mod Manager here, as well as the Terrible Textures for Weak Computers mod and ENB for Toon Skyrim from the Nexus Mods website. This can be downloaded and installed through the manager, and when enabled will make the game look like this. A cartoon open world wonderland filled with flat textures and animated like characters. The ENB Toon mod adds a little more polish to the terrible textures mod and should help speed up performance, but does it? Well, this is how the GT520 performs before any texture mods are activated, with the lowest settings. Walking around solitude here and you can see that we're hovering around 30 fps with a few dips below that, especially as the action starts to heat up. Expect to see around 25 to 30 fps most of the time on this 1GB DDR3 GPU. As you can see this card needs all the help it can get, so I've enabled the extreme graphics mods here, and whilst there are no significant improvements, the frame rate was a lot more stable, often maintaining a more solid 30 fps. Despite what some may consider a huge graphical reduction, I have to say the cartoon style has a certain charm to it, and it's certainly a unique way to play. And in case you wondered what the blood textures during combat look like now, well, here they are. When the screen fills up with squares, you're done for. Now Far Cry 5 can be turned way down graphically, and even the resolution scale can be reduced to 0.5. Lowering everything and turning settings like AA off will mean that you'll get a pretty pixely version of Montana, even though it's a quality sacrifice that may mean a huge FPS boost on some systems. This is how the game looks at its absolute lowest. Thanks to GameSpot's potato mode video on Far Cry 5 though, I learnt that you can adjust a couple of texture filtering options using Nvidia's Inspector software to turn things down even more. Adjusting the anti-aliasing here too is a must, though it will make on-screen text disappear, which isn't really all that helpful. Just like in Skyrim, it turns the game into a whimsical looking cartoon experience that is certainly unique in its presentation. It's actually quite charming in some ways. If the lines are too jagged for you then turning the AA back on from the in-game options will smooth out those rough edges, though of course incur a performance hit. So once again, how does the GT520 handle this? Well with everything turned way down low and no texture tweaks enabled, the game will run at about 10 frames per second. Now this isn't ideal for any game let alone a first person shooter, but enabling the graphical tweaks here actually doesn't do much in the way of performance increases, so it seems the 520 is too weak to run this modern release, no matter the implemented settings. But worry not, because the last game today is one that is heavily customisable mod wise, just like its predecessors, it is of course Fallout 4. Now this game supports the unusually low resolution of 800x450 in windowed mode, though the display can be stretched to full screen by setting a custom resolution in your graphics properties menu. At its absolute lowest you can expect a huge performance boost for older cards, at the cost of most detail to be honest. On a smaller laptop or notebook screen though, this wouldn't be as big of a deal. Just like in Skyrim, I use the Nexus Mod Manager to download and activate an ultra-low textures mod. 
This will take some time to install, and afterwards you'll be left with a game that looks like this. Again, this will create a nice boost on most systems that are struggling if you really want to play it and don't have the means to upgrade. Over on the GT520, the game will run on the absolute lowest settings, but it will tank below 20 FPS in busier or more compact areas like Sanctuary. Surprisingly, it will touch on 30 FPS on occasion. Using the aforementioned texture mod with this card and I saw a 5 to 10 FPS boost in the average frame rate with the game tickling the 30 FPS threshold more often. Overall this card is far better suited to older games these days and it's there that these graphical mods will help out the most, like in Skyrim. However, you still might see a slight performance increase in newer titles, and sometimes those extra few frames may mean the difference between playable and unplayable, so messing around with mods and tweaks is always worth a go, even if you think all hope is lost. Still, I bet Low Spec Gamer could still squeeze a bit more performance out of this card. So there we have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, it has uh, been a little bit different, it's not my usual style of things, but I just had to test out some of these tweaks and mods for myself to see if we could uh, put any more life into the old GT520. As always, thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it, if you didn't leave a dislike on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.